An electronic drum, also known as electric drums, digital drums, or electronic percussion, is a modern electronic musical instrument, a special type of synthesizer or sampler, primarily designed to serve as an alternative to an acoustic drum kit or other percussion instruments. An electronic drum consists of an electronic or digital sound module which produces the synthesized or sampled percussion sounds and one or more electric sensors to trigger the sounds. Like regular drums, the sensors are struck by drumsticks or by the hands depending on the type of drum pad and they are played in a similar manner as an acoustic drum kit. Strictly speaking, sequences playing pre-programmed electronic drum tracks and electronic or digital drum machines are not electronic drums, because a drummer or other musician is not triggering the sounds. The electronic drum pad triggering device is usually sold as part of an electronic drum kit, consisting of a set of drum pads mounted on a stand or rack in a configuration similar to that of an acoustic drum kit layout, with rubberized Roland, Yamaha, Alesis, for example, or specialized acoustic, electronic symbols, e.g. Zildjians. Gen 16. The drum pads themselves are either discs or shallow drum shells made of various materials, often with a rubber, silicone or cloth-like coated playing surface. Each pad has a sensor that generates an electric signal when struck. The electric signal is transmitted through cables into an electronic or digital drum module brain as it is sometimes called, synthesizer or other device, which then produces a sound associated with, and triggered by, the struck pad. The sound signal from the drum module can be plugged into a keyboard amp or PA system for use in a live band performance or listened to with headphones for silent practice. Since digital drums have become more popular, companies have started selling digital electronic drum files, referred to as drum kits. While electronic drum kits are typically used to trigger drum and percussion sounds, a MIDI-equipped electronic drum kit can be used to trigger any types of MIDI sounds, such as synthesized or sampled piano, guitar, or any other instrument. Topic history In 1967, Felix Visser, a drummer playing with the Dutch pop band The VIPs, modified one of the pre-Roland era acetone electronic rhythm boxes, which was intended to play simple pre-programmed rhythms, so that it could be played as a live instrument. The acetone rhythm box was designed by Akutaro Kakehashi, who later founded Roland Corporation Japan. As with all rhythm boxes and later drum computers, before a human feel was developed by introducing subtle variation and swing, the acetone rhythm boxes had a metronomic, machine-like sound. In Visser's modification, the acetone box was extended with a large flat board holding 12 printed circuit boards of approximately 4 times 4 inches, with the copper traces intertwining like forks. The copper traces formed the touch surfaces for the sounds generated by the acetone box. Each touch pad was sensed by an electronic circuit driving high-speed Siemens computer relays he found in surplus shops. These were connected to the drum and percussion sounds of the rhythm box. Although it was a crude way of playing electronic drum sounds by hand like a percussionist playing bongos and congas, it worked and added a human feel. Visser's approach enabled drummers to have new type of virtuosity e.g., rolls on electronic bass drums could be played with sticks. The unit was used in Franz Peter's studio in Radio City Hilversum, Netherlands. The system was over-sensitive to humidity, the circuits would be triggered by the touch pads, merely by damp. Just breathing over them would do the job. So in the end a 40-watt light bulb was built inside the box holding the pads, electronic circuitry and relays, to heat up the unit when the instrument had been sitting in a car and then put on a stage in a relatively warm, damp environment. After all we'd just left the dark ages of electronic music. Quote. The first electronic drum was invented by George Parsons, of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the early 1960s patent hashtag US a. Mr. Parsons was featured on The Ed Sullivan Show, The Tonight Show, with Johnny Carson, and in the widely popular urban publication known as Jet Magazine. However, Mr. Parsons' design and utility patent quickly became obsolete, due to the manner and execution of the «electric actuators» used in his design. The first «commercial» application of the electronic drum came along in the early 70s by Graham Edge, drummer of the Moody Blues, in collaboration with Sussex University professor Brian Groves. The device was used in the song «Procession» from the 1971 album Every Good Boy Deserves Favor. 
Question, one of the strangest pieces was Procession Every Good Boy Deserves Favor, 1971, which featured the pioneering work of Graham Edge's electronic drum kit. How did that come about? Graham I'd got in touch with the professor of electronics at Sussex University, Brian Groves. We worked up an electronic drum kit, a marvelous idea. I had the control panel in front of me, it's old hat now but we were the first to do it. There were pieces of rubber with silver paper on the back with a silver coil that moved up and down inside a magnet that produced a signal, so it was touch sensitive. I had five snares across the top and then ten tom-toms and then a whole octave of bass drums underneath my feet and then four lots of sixteen sequences, two on each side. There was a gap, to play a space, a tambourine, ebony stick, snare and three tom-toms. This was pre-chip days, back then you did it all with transistors. So it had something like 500 transistors. The electronic drums inside looked something like spaghetti. When it worked it was superb, but it was before its day, because it was so sensitive. Quote. The first commercial electronic drum was the Pollard Syndrome, released by Pollard Industries in 1976. It consisted of an electric sound generator and one or more drum pads. It quickly caught the attention of numerous high-profile drummers, percussionists at the time, such as Carmine Apice and Terry Bozio. However, the syndrome was a financial failure and the company failed in the following years. In 1978, the Simmons Company was created to produce commercial electronic drum sets. Its most notable product was the SDS-5, released in 1981. With its characteristic hexagon-shaped pads, the SDS-5 was first used by Richard James Burgess on From the Tea Rooms of Mars, Chant No. 1 by Spandau Ballet, and Angel Face by Shock. After its debut on the top musical chart shows and parades, this electronic instrument garnered significant attention from established and influential rock, pop musicians. The sound of the SDS-5 is often described retrospectively with phrases such as awful or sounded like trash can lids by those who employ them at the time. Despite the critics, the distinctive Simmons sound was extensively used during the 1980s by pop, rock and synth pop groups such as Duran Duran and progressive rock bands such as Rush, among others. Simmons drums are often viewed somewhat nostalgically by those who began to experiment with these early forays into electronic drums and percussion. In the following years, other companies started selling their own versions of electronic drums, notably Roland and Yamaha. At that time, the electronic drums were similar to 2016-era starter or entry-level kits. They consisted of rubber-coated sensor pads mounted on stands. The pads were created to be velocity-sensitive and the sound was generated through single or multiple layered sampling or synthesized sound. In 1997, Roland introduced its TD-10 model, which had two important musical, electronic innovations. The first and more controversial innovation was its method of providing a sound for the drums, pads to trigger, instead of generating its sound by using samples of an acoustic drum or cymbal. The TD-10 used mathematical models to generate its sounds using synthesizers. While some drummers lamented the fact that the produced sound was not a pure sample of an acoustic sound, others felt that simple replication of an acoustic drum was not the goal. Secondly, instead of only providing rubber-coated pads, Roland featured a new mesh-like pad, produced in collaboration with acoustic drum skin manufacturer Remo. The mesh head pads look and feel approximately like a smaller sized acoustic drum. The Remo – Roland mesh surface is made from a double layer of taut woven mesh fibers, fitted with several electronic sensors or triggers. The playing feel is close to that of striking an acoustic drum, but with more bounce than an acoustic skin. Roland termed its innovative commercial drum set V Drums, which later became the marketed brand name of its electronic drum line. Together, the mathematical, computational modeling, mesh head pad surface and improved trigger sensor technology greatly increased the quality of sounds, volume levels in practice and live show settings and the realistic feel of electronic drums. <laughs> Recent innovations Newer drum kits from major manufacturers have therefore addressed many of the shortcomings of early electronic drum pads and modules. 
While each of the significant market brands have entry-level units, the professionally marketed kits are geared toward creating sounds and playing experiences that are nearly indistinguishable from playing a quality acoustic kit or world, orchestral percussion instruments. Examples of these high-end professional kits include the Yamaha DTX950K and Roland V-Drums TD30KV. Typically, these professional level and studio kits are equipped with High-quality digital sounds, these drum modules offer high-quality model drum sounds, with hundreds of on-board sounds, effects and audio loops and song options, patterns to choose from. Some of these modules allow the user to dial in the specifics of tuning, head type, depth, width and material, metal, wood type, etc. Trigger sensor, reliability and reduction of cross, torque have been vastly improved. Triggering now allows both the head and the rim to produce sounds, facilitating rim and cross shots as well as shell tapping and many other audio sounds that can be assigned to the head or rim, so that the options for live music increase even more. Symbols can accommodate more zones, for edge, bow and bell strikes, with choking capability and realistic symbol swells Roland and Yamaha video demonstrations on YouTube and Facebook with Craig Blundell, Michael Schack, and Joni Rabb for Roland, and Zach Bond and Andy Fissenden for Yamaha. Realistic hi-hats, these newer versions are no longer single symbol pads but dual replicated symbols, that can be mounted on regular stands like their acoustic versions. These symbols allow for actual opened and closed hand, foot playing. A high-spec electronic module detects hi-hat movement, height and position, providing realistic variations of sound via degree of placement, open, partially open, and closed hi-hat strikes. Some modules, like the Roland TD30, also feature foot close and quick close open sounds, with pressure on the cymbals also being sensed and replicated when tightening or loosening the foot pressure, even on a closed hi-hat. So, the audio sounds tighter when firm pressure is applied on an already closed hi-hat pedal Roland's TD30 module, as demonstrated by Craig Blundell, Omar Hakim and Michael Schack on YouTube for Roland. Tom Griffin for Yamaha also demonstrates cymbal sensitivities in a demo on YouTube. Multiple outputs – The professional level modules from the leading manufacturers have multiple outputs to the sound board such that each percussion group i.e. toms, cymbals, etc. can be independently mixed like the multiple micking of an acoustic kit. Additionally, these groups have independent volume faders on the module to fine-tune volume settings for each group. Another commonly designated output is the MIDI connection, which sends signals to a computer-based specialist MIDI software or, for example, a DAW digital audio workstation. The increased processing power provided by this option allows the user to utilize actual, randomized samples of professionally recorded or modeled drums. The output and input of the pads, trigger devices etc. can be augmented or controlled through digital software, the module, MIDI instruments and other samplers. The result is a phenomenally credible, nuanced, flexible set of instruments and, arguably, by some accounts, an almost indistinguishable augmentation or replacement for traditionally recorded drums and melodic, world percussion and effects. Not many acoustic drummers will warm to that, and many studio engineers will quibble about the finer audio details regarding acoustic vs electronic, but that is not the scope of the article. Topic. Comparison to acoustic drum set Topic: <inaudible> Advantages <inaudible> Although not totally silent because they are still being played by striking on the surface of the drums, electronic drums and their counterpart devices usually produce considerably less acoustic noise than a traditional drum kit. Also, the drummer can use headphones for an essentially silent and private practice in dwellings where it would be impossible to have a studio or acoustic noise level, and perhaps where regular sized kits would not fit. They are lighter and easier to transport than an acoustic drum kit. Electronic drum sets are usually more compact than acoustic drums though it is possible to have them customized to acoustic sizes, or convert acoustic kits to become one and so that alters their size benefits, depending on your choice. A single electronic kit can via its module or software simulate the sounds of countless acoustic kits and instruments effects. A drummer in a cover band or wedding band can switch instantly, for instance, between a vintage jazz drum kit and a powerful maple rock kit. 
Other options include congas, piano, guitar, brushes, orchestral timpani, gongs or even add hand claps or sound effects such as a sirens. In the 2010s, many non-musical samples and effects are available. It is therefore possible to achieve much more than one can with an acoustic kit alone and one has to transport significantly less kit to play a wide variety of sounds and instruments. Electronic drums do not require complex and expensive microphones or their large stand arrangements for recording, unlike acoustic drums. Instead, the sound can be obtained through line-out or MIDI connections. Because of this, an electronic drum is good for education, practice, composition applications. The best quality electronic drums and drum modules can even be used in studio recording or live performance. Electronic drums usually have useful features for both the aspiring beginner or professional alike, such as metronomes with different metronome voices, play along songs, loops and samples, with the ability to record practicing or playing, syncing of the metronome to a studio door metronome instead of using the studio's click, or experimenting with composition. It is also easy to use an MP3 player or iPod to play songs for practice or for looping those parts to target technique issues or replicate drum parts. Electronic drums can be played at a significantly lower volume level, and so are less restrictive for use, avoiding the need for the rest of a band or other quieter musicians to have to increase their volume acoustically or electronically to match the percussive volume level. This is particularly advantageous in smaller rooms, or older architectural theaters, classical, folk, choral-style settings, where excessive volume is not necessarily desired and can dominate in a way that is difficult and time-consuming to solve with acoustic drums. Some small venues use plexiglass screens to reduce the on-stage drum volume. When equipment such as sticks, brushes, vinyl brushes for mesh heads, and mallets are used with electronic drums, they last slightly longer than on acoustic kits, due to the use of rubberized rims and hoop protection that prevents stick contact with metal. They can be used to control or sample from other MIDI instruments or work with other samplers, Roland SPDSX, or Yamaha DTX Multi-12, or percussion pads, Alesis percussion pad, Roland SPD-30 Octopad, Hansonic HPD-20 or the Yamaha DTX Multi-12. They also work well alongside DAW software for using samples rather than modeled computer-generated sounds. Disadvantages Electronic drums do not perfectly reproduce the sound of acoustic drum kits. This may not be the entire scope or purpose for electronic kits in 2016, but it is still a large priority for many customers. Unlike acoustic kits, the individual drums, sensors, pads, modules, and cables of an electronic kit may be incompatible with those of other models or brands. Electronic drums may be more costly than an acoustic kits of equivalent quality, particularly when the need for a keyboard amplifier or other sound system is factored in. Important features such as realistic feeling pads and advanced, realistic sound modeling or samples are generally limited to expensive sets. Entry-level electronic kits generally use single-triggered rubberized hard pads and modest quality samples or sound modeling. Unlike acoustic drum kits, which are powerful enough to be audible in a small gig without amplification, electronic kits need at least one power outlet and a keyboard amplifier or small PA system to be audible. The quality of the sounds reproduced by an electronic kit depends on the quality of the sound module, samples, amplifier, personal monitors, headphones, satellite speakers, or audio system used by the performer. Every region has regulations on electronic equipment. Bands that are on tour with electronic drums will need to do maintenance and periodic tests of the equipment. As well, bands that are crossing international borders may need accurate paperwork for their electronic drums. Cables, plugs, adapters, earthing, and any sign of damage or modification without the proper paperwork could nullify a band's or a venue's insurance policy. Occasionally a venue may require a risk assessment before electronic drums can be used on stage. Variations Tabletop electronic drum 
A tabletop electronic drum or portable electronic drum is an electronic drum that has all of its pads except foot pedals and the electronic sound module combined in a single tabletop unit. It usually has a small amplifier and small loudspeakers incorporated. The sound generation is generally simpler, single layered samples when compared to more expensive full-size electronic kits. Also, the feel when playing a tabletop drum pad is very different from using a full-size electronic kit or an acoustic kit. The advantages of tabletop drums are the portability and the relatively lower price. Some acoustic drummers use a tabletop electronic drum as their first foray into electronic drumming, since purchasing a single tabletop unit and setting it up alongside an acoustic drum kit is much cheaper and simpler than fitting an entire acoustic kit with sensors and connecting them to a drum brain. Topic. Acoustic triggered drum kit An acoustic triggered drum kit is a regular acoustic drum kit coupled with drum trigger S sensors on the drums and cymbals. The triggers can be built inside or permanently fixed onto cymbals so that they are necessarily either fixed triggers electronic kit essentially removable can be either acoustic or electronic by default of purpose at the time or simply an acoustic kit that is now actually a hybrid kit using external triggers that attach to the rim and skin or batter head so as to trigger other sounds on top of the natural acoustic sound produced or simply to boost it for performance the triggers detect hits vibrations on the batter head and or hoop rim and generate an electric signal the signal is then sent to an electronic module sampler or via cables and an audio interface to midi door drum software on a pc laptop mac to trigger the selected sounds Usually, the acoustic triggered kit has either commercially available mesh head skins, silent, or the drummer keeps her natural skins using acoustic skins for a hybrid kit a standard practice and other muting accessories to reduce the acoustic sounds generated when played. This way, an acoustic electro, acoustic, or hybrid triggered drum kit has the feel and sizes of the standard acoustic kit but with the added benefits of an electronic kit's on-stage silence, controllable volume an important factor in small venues or the added sound library available in 2016-era high-end kits, which includes sounds for large gongs and other instruments that are expensive and hard to transport in their original acoustic form. A recent innovation is DrumsAnywhere software, which uses only a single piezoelectric microphone to trigger eight different drum pads on any flat or irregular surface. Topic users Larry Blackman of Cameo Tim Alexander Primus Rick Allen of Def Leppard 1985 present after losing his left arm, Allen used a customized kit built by Simmons, but has since modified his drums. Nicholas Barker Dimu Borgir, Travis Barker on a Plus 44 album Sebastian Beresford, B. I. D. Arcana left field above and beyond Hal Blaine session drummer Pollard Syndrome Craig Blundell, master drummer, top international clinician, freelance musician, drummer for Frost, Pendragon, Ghosts of Fortune, inglorious numerous top artists. Tim Booth of James, plays an electronic drum during live concerts, notably on Hey Ma track Bubbles, although he does not do so in the studio. Rob Borden of Linkin Park uses two Pintech pads on the left of his kit, with different snare sounds triggered. Bill Bruford in King Crimson, ABWH, Yes, and Earthworks producer Gus Dudgeon played the Simmons SDSV on two of Elton John's albums, 1985's Ice on Fire and 1986's Leather Jackets. Warren Kahn Ultravox, an electronic percussion pioneer who made extensive use of the instruments on the albums Vienna, Rage in Eden, Quartet, and Lament. Danny Carey of Tool Band uses seven synesthesia mandala drums, which sense strike position and velocity. Igor Cavalera Sepultura Column o Siosoig My Bloody Valentine on the Loveless album. Rick Kolaluka Watchtower Only Tom's Coldplay Chip Davis of Mannheim Steamroller Phil Collins Genesis Simmons Kits SDSV SDS7 on Genesis and Invisible Touch albums as well as his solo album No Jacket Required Sinair Drums various including the Timpani on Abacab and Genesis as well as the and then there were 3 and Duke Tours Simmons SDX on We Can't Dance Mickey Dolan's, during the Monkees mid-1990s reunion tour Doll Factory Sly Dunbar he frequently used an electric drum set while playing with the band Black Uhuru. 
Stuart Elliott, The Alan Parsons Project, Simmons Kit Tats Fastino Wolfgang Fleur, Carl Bartos, Craftwork, built their own manual electronic drum kit. Yasuchika Fuji P model bass drum was used to activate sequencer Bud Gore, Sublime Dub Effects Rocky Gray Evanescence Werger's kit Alex Van Halen prominently used on the 5150 album and tour. Alex has since gone back to acoustic drums. Ernst Hefter Ganymede Malcolm Holmes orchestral maneuvers in the dark on his first Top of the Pops TV performance in 1980 he performed standing up playing an electronic drum kit. Peter Hook, New Order's former bass guitarist Mark Jackson, XVNV Nation Ruggiero Jardim, Infected Mushroom Acura Jimbo Jean-Michel Jar David Kennedy Angels and Airwaves on Angels and Airwaves 2008 tour. Asamu Kitajima Da Curls Hollywood Undead he uses electronic drums in every live show and on the album Swan Songs Marina of the Fresh Beat Band Nick Mason Pink Floyd Joseph San Mateo Kairos Keith Moon The Who Pollard Syndrome J. Moore Primal State Reality Resistant EP Stephen Morris New Order and Joy Division Jim Mothersbaugh Devo Homemade Electronic Kit Alan Myers Devo Sinair Drum Pads Josh Fries Devo Roland V Drums Nadim Shravan Bollywood Composer Duo who rocked the 1990s with their music. They extensively used combination of electronic drums with conga drums. Carl Palmer of Emerson, Lake and Palmer in the 1973 album Brain Salad Surgery, on the song Takata. Dan Pearson Ganga Giri, Neil Peart Rush, currently uses both Roland electronic drums and acoustic drums in his live solos, formerly used Simmons SDSV from 1983 to 1989 Mike Portnoy Dream Theater, Triggered Kick, Snare, and Toms used on Images and Words Nick Rice, Hadoken, Left Field Bill Rieflin Ministry, Revolting Cox, KMFDM and REM Sean Reinert, Cynic Yuichi Sakamoto Yellow Magic Orchestra Christoph Schneider Ramstein Hybrid Drums Set during Herzlied and Sane Such era Jez Strode, Kayagugu, Sadatoshi Tainaka, P model, played during second tenure with the band, utilized together with acoustic drum kit Yukihiro Takahashi, Yellow Magic Orchestra, Roger Taylor, Queen Matt Tong of Block Party, who uses electronic drums on the track Compliments and some pads in other songs from the 2005 album Silent Alarm. Chad Wackerman, Frank Zappa, Gary Wallace, Pink Floyd, Mike plus the Mechanics, Schiller, Il Devo, Alan White of Yes, Alan Wilder, Depeche Mode, The Wiggles used on tours from 2011 to 2013, but absent in 2014. Jack Garrett used in all live performances. Gwyneth Mulliken used in Black Sheep UK. Zach Hill of Death Grips. Topic notes. <laughs>